I've made a few shots about TikTok renowned feminist and thought provoking genius Katie with a son name that has no vows. Men are quite literally more likely to be hit by a comet than be falsely accused of rape. And since I haven't tortured myself enough for views and clicks, and I think I'm addicted to the pain her voice, snack, and logic inflicts on my soul. Good job. And that is why I've decided to make a reaction video on the playlist on her TikTok she calls Dumb Stuff People Say. And if you want to watch my soul leave my body repeatedly, then keep watching. It is guaranteed. Radical feminists to make you wish for death. So here we go. Gender pay gap doesn't exist. Women just choose lower paying jobs. Welcome to dumb shit people say I can disprove in just under a minute. Here we go again. So you often hear people say that women earn less because they choose lower paying professions like teaching or nursing. And while it's true that on average these jobs are lower paid today, that wasn't always the case. Slow down and let's see where this goes. Before women were allowed to have jobs that require qualifications, it was men who occupied all of the professions we considered as feminine today. For instance, nurses used to be exclusively male. But then as women started to move into these occupations, they began paying less. And that's also confirmed by the largest study on this topic to date, done by Paula England. In some professions, wages declined as much as 57 percentage points when they went from being predominantly male to female. In some others, they decline by 34 or 21. So no, women don't choose lower paying jobs. Jobs become lower paid when women take over previously male dominated field. <laughs> this is a perfect demonstration of lies, damned lies and statistics. You see, interpreting statistics requires basic knowledge of how things work. If you don't understand how the world works, you give weird interpretation like our feminist friend and you start to confirm your biases and misconceptions. All she needs is less feminism and more understanding of basic economics. Nay, it is called the law of demand and supply. This is economics 101. When demand exceeds supply, prices tend to rise. And when supply exceeds demand, prices tend to fall. This is what is happening here. It's not rocket science. What do you think was the economic impact of women in the workforce? It meant a bigger workforce. The labor market became more competitive and the pay for jobs that more people applied for decreased and the wages for jobs that fewer people went for increased. And guess which one most women chose? Even the studies you cited mentioned pack workers, designers and housekeepers. What did you expect would happen to this job in a highly competitive market? Even on educated market women. Expect the price of tomatoes to fall in tomato season, yet we have an educated woman thinking tomatoes are being marginalized. Jobs become lower paid when women take over previously male dominated fields. You see? You see yourself? You just exposed yourself. See what identity politics has done to you. Help yourself and grab a couple of basic economics by Thomas Sowell. It will make you wiser than any study from biased feminists who are common sense illiterates. Now maybe you have a better argument in the next video, so let's keep watching. Men have always ruled the world. That's just the natural order of things. Welcome to dumb shit people say I can disprove in just under a minute. No, another one? It's not uncommon to hear some men push the narrative that men have always been the dominant gender. But that couldn't be more wrong. For majority of human history, we lived in hunter-gatherer societies, which were, for the most part, egalitarian. And as anthropological research shows, there were no strictly defined hierarchies of power or social status. What's more, it's not only men who did the hunting as it was previously believed. Both men and women hunted and both men and women gathered and they largely lived together as equals. Now, the shift from these egalitarian societies to more patriarchal ones happened only around six to 10,000 years ago as a result of the agricultural revolution. And this is also where all sorts of inequalities started to emerge. So if you consider that we've been hunter-gatherers for around 200,000 years and men have only ruled this world for around 10,000, it's equality that's the norm and patriarchy the exception. Ne, you always succeed in shooting yourself in the foot with your argument. I mean, were you listening to yourself? Did you hear the words that we are coming out of your mouth? For majority of human history, we lived in hunter-gatherer societies, which were, for the most part, egalitarian. So what are you advocating for? For us to regress to the stone ages? You want us to return to becoming hunters and gatherers living in caves? I mean, you just made the best argument for the patriarchy. Not only is it the natural order of things, it is the best natural order of things. It is not my argument though, that's your argument. According to your position, men ruling the world is natural because it brought us to a better place. Under the patriarchy, we are able to grow our own food, build houses, design remarkable architecture, perform wonders in the field of medicine, science and technology. If nature is supposed to advance, else it stands the threat of extinction, then the patriarchy is the natural order of things for the mere reason that it has kept us from extinction. It is the best for the same reason. See, survival of the fittest is the natural order of things. And if the patriarchy, according to you, brought us this far, then how is it not natural? Good 
question good question by your argument the patriarchy is not just the norm it is the best norm that's why homo sapiens are still around today and homo erectus are extinct and maybe you just revealed the goal of your version of feminism you know human extinction which explains why not having children is considered empowering right again that's not my argument that's your argument i mean how dumb can it get well we have one more video to help us decide so let's keep watching men always did everything to protect women welcome to damn should people say i can disprove in just under a minute oh for god's sake i can't honestly the narrative that men are the natural protectors of women is as old as time but it's more literary fiction than a historical reality take middle ages for instance we're all familiar with the stories of knights in shining armor rescuing damsel in distress. As historian Richard Walker once put it, they're as far removed from the reality of Middle Ages as they are from our own. Because they aren't based on the behavior of actual knights, but the ideas of European neo-romantic writers in the late 19th century. Even the women and children first thing was never true either. It got popularized thanks to Titanic, but actually according to a study of sea disasters spanning three centuries, it's women who had the lowest survival rates as men almost always left them behind. So no, men aren't our protectors. If anything, you could make a stronger case, they're our natural predators. And the best case is that you are naturally stupid. Damn! That's my conclusion. How else do you say something like this if stupidity is not stitched in your DNA? And I'm not insulting this fine young lady. I'm just giving you my final analysis on the matter. That's my hypothesis and she has gone to great length to prove it. I mean, do you need a study to tell you that men are natural protectors? I mean, only stupid people We need a peer-reviewed study to confirm something this obvious. Look around you. Who is securing the borders of the country you live in? Who is securing every building you walk into? What's the predominant gender in law enforcement? When we say men are natural natural protectors. We mean men have the innate ability that make them better equipped to be protectors. It doesn't mean that all men are naturally inclined to protect. Some are cowards, some are weak, some are tyrants and predators, and some are heroes. But all men are more naturally capable of protecting lives. They are biologically designed to do so. That's why we encourage them to do so. We write stories of knights in shining armor and invent slogans like women and children first to encourage men to do what they are designed to do. Preach to him, you're a preach. And society can't function if men don't assume this role. Such a society becomes weak and falls under the weight of a superior civilization. What men need are messages and imageries that compel them to assume this role, not narrow-minded feminists who only see the negative aspect of masculinity. Even when they live in the best times in human existence, proudly brought to them by the exploits of brave, courageous protectors called men. And may God have mercy on your soul. <sighs> and that's the end. Thank God is just just three videos. I mean, I don't think humans are designed to take more than three minutes of such a display of shallow thinking else you start losing hope in humanity. And until the next video, take care and please don't be a radical feminist.